Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a, actually, it's a great pleasure for me to come back to this meeting. Actually, uh, if I look back, actually, I was here the first meeting, too, so it's a great honor to be here. So before I start, just disclosure, I do work, uh, uh, try to develop uh, some character with uh, uh, Peng Yang and also publish a book with uh, Springer. Now, when I have this talk before, and actually when I look back uh, and look at this uh, uh, logo here, is, uh, this year is the nine years. Maybe because I spent so much time in this company, I think I only missed one year uh, since it started in uh, 2004. And I actually look back the original, uh, um, the, the plan for the logo they have at 2004 in Germany. Uh, actually, it fresh back a lot of memory. I think it's quite important. Sometimes we have to look back and look forward to see what has been happening. Actually, I'm able to manage to uh, take out one of the original invitation or the brochure that they sent to me when they invited me to give a talk. So I'm going to share with you to see how much they claim trying to do actually work and then, and then take it forward. Now, in this letter, basically the opening statement is, Ultrasound imaging and anesthesia is a developing subject and will be helpful to any anesthesia of the future. Now, the future is already here. And the next paragraph of this uh, brochure basically talking about uh, using, still using electrical stimulation. And at that time, probably when they put this in, because at that time, I do do a lot of um, uh, epidural stimulation for those that may know, may not know, that basically I'm trying to uh, stimulate full epidural space confirmed because I can tell you the truth at that time uh, I don't believe in peripheral nerve block. If I paraphrase with a uh, uh, wiki brew, basically I would say that at that time most literature about peripheral nerve block 95, 99% success rate. Just like wiki brew say I think they are full of shit or myself is full of shit because my <laughs> success rate probably is 95% not working most of the time if I want a surgical and usually you end up, yes, you try half hour, fooling around, and then you go on your backup block. The backup block, like the surgeon you used to laugh at us, saying that you need a brain block. And then I do change to a continued catheter. But this catheter is a little bit big, and we call it EG tube. So <laughs> it's quite a common scenario. It's true, prior to ultrasound. Now, at the end, the, the brochure basically say, in the clinical setting, they want to have this uh, forum hopefully help you learn and apply the imaging technology technique in, in your practice. When I look back, because actually I start doing ultrasound right at this meeting, just like you sitting in here, get excited and go back and carry on. So I have to say that I believe that in, at least in Canada or at least in our own institution, many of my colleagues have been greatly influenced by this conference the quality Vincent and Thomas have put in had tremendous. I think probably we should, uh, um, I hope you can join me to congratulate uh, Thomas and uh, Vincent to start this conference. I think if you don't organize this conference properly, ultrasound may take off a little bit uh, slower, I would say. Uh, please uh, give uh, Vincent a clap. I think we truly... I think without that catalyst, we may still using uh, using nerve stimulation and pretend we know what we're doing, but we are not. Now, go back to the true topic. Sometimes this kind of topic is hard because I listened to lecture for the last two days. They talk about intra neuron should be or, or extra neuron injection, uh, uh, local anesthetic toxicity. Everything has been talked. So I have to redo all my slide and try to summarize it. That um, that what we think we discuss here to, to have a background and then go on to explain some of people ask me about a little bit older history on uh, why nurse stimulation, why we need D5, what may be potential will be in the near future to refresh your memory. And so happened that in 2004, we're still talking about safety aspect when we're talking about it. So safety is always uh, important. Now, as I say, I'm going to try to uh, summarize what I understand here and discuss based on this and then expo uh, expand on it. So basically, why we want to, save, to be safe. So in other words, what do we worry about the most? 
and how should we do the block and how we use the injection. Now, the key point I can summarize from my understanding in here is, is intraneural injection safe? I think we don't have enough evidence. But at the same time, we learn a lot that we know it happens often. So we don't have uh, one way or the other. But the thing is, this, I don't think we need to be try to get to an uh, intraneural injection. This is my own belief. In terms of injury, we're talking about some needle may be worse than the other. Probably we can just use uh, a brand needle. That's why most of the broad needle uh, uh, built that way. So we'll keep using that. We're talking about high pressure injection, usually associated with um, uh, nerve, uh, at least in animal model, uh, that can cause a problem. I do believe on that too. And also, some study also show if you give a small amount of local anesthetic, sometimes that is enough to uh, causing a damage. So I look at that to see how we can develop the uh, um, regime that will hopefully be safest. Same thing that prior to come here, I only do maybe block once a month, try to say. I'm not worried about safety because talking about the uh, risk like one in a hundred, uh, one in a thousand, something probably won't reach. But once I come here to do ultrasound, then I know that I may going to hit on uh, the my because I do more block, the chance that I uh, get in trouble are more high. So when I first go back, I think hard, I try to incorporate at that time what is the most likelihood will be safest way to do it. So I'm going to share with how I did it. So what do we worry about the most? If you look back when I was a resident, we keep talking about test stores. Everyone talk about local anesthetic toxicity. Now it's coming down a little bit because now we are ultrasound, we can cut down on the dosage, and more importantly, we have uh, so-called antidose. So we feel more comfortable, and because ultrasound cut down dose, we can see the spread, we can see the artery, the chance of getting into vein artery is less. Now we have uh, another antidote. So we seem to be shift our concern to the other way. The change is now, because we can see, now we realize that the intraneural injection more often than we think of, so we start worrying about would that cause damage. So completely shift. If you look at the literature like 10 years ago, test those, look at EKG, how you look at the arrhythmia, et cetera. But now it's all talk about intraneural. Every debate, every conference go to it, going to have the intraneural injection or extra intraneural injection debate all the time. So then based on that, you know, I like to pay gadgets. So I try to develop some technique, hopefully can detect it. So I'm going to share some of this with you. Now, this uh, originally from uh, limiting the uh, ingestion pressure, the concept is like I mean, Hex is saying that you need to reduce the pressure less than 20 PSI, probably will be uh, safer. Now, in nurse simulation, I think in general, saying that we try to avoid injection uh, below 0.2. And our impedance, I'm going to explain a little bit more. But in general, what we expect that if your needle go into the nerve, the impedance may be high. So you try to not inject when the impedance suddenly jump up a couple points. I'm going to explain that to you a little bit more. Now go to back to the how we going to control the low pressure injection. You can buy commercial pot uh, to do that, or you can using an infusion pump have a pressure gate. You can do that too. But we just uh, using a simple physics concept try to limit it. Now if you look at this, less than 25 psi is about 1293 uh, a thousand over a thousand milli mercury. Okay. So what we did is using simple gas law. Basically, if you this is 30 cc uh, syringe, we put 20 cc local. We typically use that. Put 10 cc air behind it. When you compare by half, that means you actually limit your pressure to 1760. So that is really important because we do have a, a, a anesthesia assistant to help us inject. So, you know, sometimes you get a a gentle guy, sometimes you get a big guy that just ram it in. You have no control how much pressure. But with this, I can look at it. And also the beauty about this is you can see we do uh, this study. You can see the pressure kept at what we expected. And we don't have overshoot because it's dampened the whole thing. So from that, what typically happens is my assistant will say, I cannot inject. It doesn't go anywhere. 
then I pull back my needle, suddenly the injection can go. So that's one thing I find is quite useful and limited uh, our pressure quite reliably and without the overshoot. I've, honestly, I think now we've done maybe more than a few or 4,000 supercurricular blocks. Uh, we have PGY1, uh, uh, basically just a uh, first year resident to do it. Uh, we don't have any prolonged procedures. I think this may have something to do with it because we do get a lot of time that we cannot inject, just stop there, the injection, we just have to hold back, and then, and then suddenly we can inject, and then we get a, a surrounding spread. So next question is, how are we using ultrasound and nerve stimulation together? Now, we're using ultrasound, we all love to see spread. There's no doubt about it. But think about your nerve stimulation. You, how many people still remember the RASH test? Okay, so basically RASH test is described that when you give a small amount of normal CD in local anesthetic, the stimulation will disappear. Okay, and the explanation is because your inject light push the nerve away. So how many people still believe that? This is what Attach the rush stat lock to the catheter. And this is uh, for and the nerve uh, bolster. To the stat lock. Turn the nerve stimulator setting down to the lowest output where brisk twitches are still observed and inject the local anesthetic agent. Note that the twitches stop immediately after the injection started. This constitutes a positive Raj test, which provides a final indication. Okay. So with this, because my background is a bit engineering, so I think it doesn't make sense because usually mechanical response is not that fast and won't be repeatable this way. So usually you can do that is like when we turn on the light switch, uh, that kind of electrical signal can be faster and respond to different things. So I did a study um, basically saying that actually the reason why uh, uh, the stimulation stop because we injecting saline or local anesthetic is also saline based, is a conducting media. So basically you dilute the stimulation, so that's why you drop. To prove that, so I look at literature, what we can use equivalent with the same osmolarity and without hurting patient and safe, high safe profile that we can uh, use uh, replace it. So we, we did a, a quick study. So first thing, I want to do the uh, uh, conducting media. But this is a pig, okay? It's not Albertan baby or something, okay? So basically, I want to reproduce rush test, okay? Now it's gone. So it's, this is exactly like rush test. Basically, we inject a little bit of saline, it's gone. So same thing, we change to D5W. Hi, ready? Okay, now it's, right? And then nurse stimulus setting, nothing changed. We inject D5, it come back. There's no way that you inject more stuff, it will get stimulation come back. This truly is not mechanical. Now, I think this is quite important concept in here. Uh, actually, I can show you the patient too. Initially, we're using D5. You see, still see stimulation. This is an infracurricular block. Is that yeah. local now? No, it's so, okay. Oh, yeah, your twitch is augmented there. Now we change the local and then it will disappear. Now this is local. Yeah. So that should just disappear as soon as he starts injecting it. Twitching? The twitching. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. So the, the reason why is if you're using electrical gel, basically when we pass the current, when you're using the needle, this, uh, the, the dye can push out because the, that's where they conduct. When it's non-insulated, it's everywhere. But when you have insulated after D5W, we maintain only the tip. But when you have the saline, it just spread everywhere. So that's why you diffuse your current, the current density below. I think that's important because imagine nowadays if I have a choice, have to see the spread or see a stimulation, I would pick the uh, spread. But now, because with D5, we actually can maintain both. But the beauty on that is not only that, that it's just co coincident uh, uh, finding in a way. That now I'm always using D5W as an initial um, injection. 
because I want to maintain this, uh, look at the spread, maintain the stimulation, and also think about, we talk about that if you just inject a little bit of local anesthetic, it can be toxic. But now I just defy, even the initial bolus going into the nerve now become defy instead of the local anesthetic. I don't know if we have proved this is safe or not, but at least you can think about now we even take out the local anesthetic. And actually some recent paper by Dr. Ganav, if they actually show that they're actually using D5 to dilute their drug, actually the onset is quicker. So we can actually make everything seems to be, uh, D5 seems to be uh, uh, working quite well in this situation. So now we always loading up with our D5 first and then open up, see the spread before we uh, change to the uh, local anesthetic injection. Now no doubt that with the imaging we can see the anatomy we can make it uh, better, so we cut down the dose. But how we local, use a local anesthetic? We know that uh, when I first start, first thing I do is I take out the uh, epinephrine and so forth, because when I read it, like uh, some studies do say that uh, potentially the ischemic insult can be uh, uh, compound to mechanical insult from the needle. But one thing, the bottom line is we still need a long-acting local anesthetic. My question is, some people try to develop some kind of, uh, uh, so other kind of sodium channel blocker, and actually those are toxin. And some people put liposome. And some people are trying to come and question, I say, can we give a uh, steroid? But all those may be okay if you're outside the nerve, but we know the needle going to uh, proportionally have some going to inside the nerve. So you, I don't know what's the safety profile. So at this time, Probably, I don't know how long this would take before it mature. So you can see uh, those kind of local anesthetic is basically a toxin or liposome have some lipid fit uh, structure there. So I think we still need to improve uh, continued catheter and Dr. Ganav, we're going to talk next talk on that. Now, this is just talking about uh, epi. There's no human studies show it's uh, dangerous, but do have some animal studies show that uh, if you have epi in it, can be a potential problem. So I normally don't use it. Now, for future monitoring in um, 2008, basically what I find is uh, if I um, put a needle outside, because it's muscle, it's more water content, when you go into a nerve, because it's a little bit more connected tissue, then the impedance is higher. Like for example, one of the commercial machines actually now have the impedance reading, so you can watch it. So basically in this study, we do pick basically in and out and check it, and then we find that it do have substantial higher. Now this is in pig. But I know that they have one study have done in human that going to publish in year future that actually confirmed this uh, uh, finding. But one thing I have to say is, we based on the principle that the needle going in is sealed well, and the nerve is a high impedance, and mind that it won't distinguish like fascia, bone, or something that they also have high impedance. It just tell you that your needle is come from one type of compartment to other type of compartment. So it doesn't tell you exactly what it is. But still, the whole thing can be tell you, maybe give you an indication something has been changed. You need to have to go from one compartment to the other compartment. But don't forget that it can be uh, affected with artifact, like if you have blood or you already inject them D5, so you're high resistant, so it can all change it. So still a lot of uh, work to be done to perfect it. But hopefully in the near future, I can report to you that we can do that. But this is one example that we can uh, we done with this kind of impedance. Sometimes you can also uh, can detect uh, intravascular, uh, but we can see the spread. That's not that crucial. But just for academic purposes, imagine your needle is in the per uh, nerve area. When you inject D5 or local anesthetic, the change should be affected. The resistance will go up depending on what you inject. But you intravascular because it's just uh, like you pour water into the sea you won't have any changes. So that also can give you some indication. When you don't see a spread, when the resistance doesn't change, you should suspect something wrong. So in summary, we will try, if on my practice, I will try to inject outside the nerve. I will try to avoid using high pressure. I always turn on my nerve stimulation 0.2. I don't use this to seek my nerve, 
but I use it to tell me if my needle getting too close to the nerve. I think D5 to have a look at my initial spread, and I avoid any unnecessary action because I don't find this actually extend the uh, block too much. So the problem, I'm um, going to say that sometimes we have to do things that I think future is depending on today what we do, like, like talking about this conference like nine years ago that can ignite a lot of people going back home. You should go back, try. I, I can tell you, you have much more fun with the ultrasound and you're more successful clinically and you can power yourself because you can make a complicated uh, anesthetic become a simple uh, anesthetic with your ultrasound more certain in, uh, than before. Okay, thank you very much.